So in this video, I want to do a deep dive into happiness and how happiness creates success in life and really take a look at why so many people out there are chasing something in the outside world to make them happy. The perfect woman, more money. They think their life needs to change. So in this video, I'm going to challenge that idea and take a deep look at it. Now, I want to invite you to like, subscribe and share. And uh, if you get some value out of this or something like comes up that you want to share to really help the group grow and, and participate, definitely put a comment in. I really appreciate it. So let's dive in. Recently, I did a video and it was the three stages of growth. And the first stage of growth is learning to be happy with life just the way it is. If you really want to master becoming uber successful in life. And I'm talking about like you want to, maybe you want to make a million dollars. Maybe you want to have your dream relationship. Maybe you want to create a nonprofit that helps tons of people. Maybe you want to travel around the world and be free, but you're just too afraid to do it. And there's something holding you back. Well, the first thing you need to do to be able to accomplish any of these goals is you got to learn to be happy with life just the way it is. Now, I'm not saying you can't start chasing these goals before you're happy, but in a lot of ways, it makes it harder. What do I mean by this? Well, most of my life, I thought that I would be happy when, you could put anything after that. I'll be happy when I have sex with a certain amount of women or a certain type of woman. I'll be happy when I have a certain type of girlfriend. I'll be happy when I make a certain amount of money. I'll be happy when I have a certain level of confidence. You know, there was this idea that I had to go get something outside of myself to become happy, to ultimately be good enough, I guess is the right word. And I had a teacher early on in my life that said, Brian, you're not broken. Stop trying to fix yourself. And when he said that, it, it really hit me kind of hard. It really hit me in a weird way because I looked at him and I thought to myself, what do you mean I'm not broken? I mean, I wouldn't even be in your classes. This is the, the teacher that actually influenced me the most around the feeling work I do and the embodiment work. But I thought to myself, I wouldn't be in your classes if I wasn't broken. Yeah, there's definitely something to fix. My life is a mess. Like, look at my life. I don't have anything straight. And at that time, I was a mess. And I really didn't get what he meant by that. And then I remembered really working on myself for years, trying to fix myself. And definitely my life improved over every one of those years. I got better. I made more money, became more successful. I traveled more places, not ultimately insanely successful, but better. I became a better version of who I was. And I was sitting there in another seminar, taking another class one day. And this idea hit me as I was watching these people go up on stage and do work. And this, this idea was really simple. It was it was, well, it was basically put in my face, you know, <laughs> this whole thing the teacher taught me that day. Well, first this man got on stage on the first, I think they were two different days apart. And I think I put it all together and the guy got on stage and he was doing the work and he had a lot to do with letting go and stuff like that. And he was learning to let go. And he, he suddenly said this weekend, I made $10,000 extra in my business. This is so great. I've, I'm feeling so good. And it was easy to go out and make, and I, I'm just really happy. And this was his first seminar, first time he'd ever come down to the, the workshop. And I thought, this is really cool. And then the next day, this woman sitting in the back, kind of a mess, got up. She said, I got this problem and oh, poor me and yada, yada, started complaining, started crying, started whining. And I thought, interesting. And she started talking about her problem. And the teacher was saying, well, I think after this next round of whatever, this release, you're probably gonna make, have a big breakthrough. And then she said something really telling. She said, well, I hope so. And then there was a reference to the fact that she'd been coming there for 10 years, trying to get to this point where she was free. And I thought this guy, one session, he's happy, he's having a blast. And this woman has been struggling for 10 years and she's still in the back crying. She's still in the back with her Kleenex and tissue and bawling. And I saw it right there, exactly what my teacher said. Brian, you're not broken. Stop trying to fix yourself. And I realized the main difference between them two was not the problems they had in life, but was the fact that he didn't see himself as broken. He came there to grow. He came there to become better at what he already did. And she came there and she saw herself as fundamentally broken. And she's still trying to fix herself after 10 years. And it, it dawned on me that that's what I had been doing all that time. 
And that's why my teacher said that to me, that I had always been trying to fix this fundamental idea that there was something wrong with me. And what happened was I did fix a lot of things. I fixed a hell of a lot of things, but I didn't see myself as any different. I still saw myself as broken. I think if I had $10 million in the bank at that time, I would have seen myself as okay. I think I would have still seen myself as broken, probably more broken in a lot of ways because here I would have created all this success and I still wouldn't have been good enough. And it would have probably hit me really hard. And I've seen that in people. I see that in guys with dating. They go out and they get the woman of their dreams or a good woman, a really beautiful woman. They set the dating life of their dreams or whatever they're after. And they're still not happy. They actually end up worse than before. I saw it in my life as I had climbed up the ladder. I looked back at my life and made more money. I actually, in some ways, got more stressed and had to dump the money because the pain was becoming too great because how I felt about myself grew. The pain grew with the success. As I became bigger, a bigger energy, the pain became bigger too. And that's when I began to realize that, that the first part of really waking up the first is becoming happy with your life just the way it is. It's loving your life just the way it is. It's like waking up in the morning and saying, whether I live in a little beat up apartment or I live in a mansion, it doesn't matter. Whether I have a million dollars in the bank or not, it doesn't matter. Whether I have the perfect relationship or not, it doesn't matter. We can literally learn to be happy. It is an art and a science. You know, as you learn to let go more and more and you learn to be present in the moment, happiness naturally ensues or joy. Let's say joy. Some people like to say joy, that this good feeling starts to ensue. You can actually reach the point where the body can experience sadness, but you're still ultimately happy. The body can experience anger, but you're ultimately fine. You're still proactive. You're still healthy. You're still there. You're awakened. Maybe the ego hasn't completely dissolved yet. That could take years. And I've heard in Buddhism, they say it takes like, what, seven years after awakening for the ego to fully dissolve if you stay in the awakened state, which is where you've separated from the ego and you start to observe. And that whole time, you're just kind of, things are coming up and dissolving. Things are coming up and dissolving. But ultimately, you can stop the suffering and you can let the ego dissolve itself. And this is what I'm talking about. What if you could get your life 80% of the time content, good, feeling pretty good. And maybe you're not perfect, but you're 80% of the time. How much easier will it be to get your goals? You might be one of those people that would say to me in that case, well, you know, the suffering, the pain is what causes me to move forward and causes me to get my goals. You know, when I'm suffering really bad, I, I push harder. I want to compensate for all the pain. And... I kind of call bullshit on that. I've seen it before with so many clients. They say that, but the truth is, is I would say that they could be more successful if they resolve this problem, that the pain is causing them to run towards something else, pushing, pushing, pushing. And a lot of times it's push, burnout, crash, push, burnout, crash, push, burnout, crash, with one exception to that rule. And that one exception is the people that have turned the push into pure pleasure. You know, you're Goggins of the world, you're Dan Pena's of the world. You know what? Life is pain. You got to get out there and you got to push for it. But secretly inside, they love telling their stories. They love the push. They love the fight. They're like the old man. I remember this guy told me this story about this old man who was bragging about how hard it was when he was young and how hard he had to work to make his millions. And people would say, oh, you know, and he's talking about the struggle and how much pain he's been through and how hard it's, you know, life is pain and you got to work hard. The whole time there's a little smile on his face. He's enjoying telling those stories. He's loving being the person that had to struggle. For some people, the struggle is fun. I have a client that's totally in cap all the time and he loves a challenge. Like, he trained for a half triathlon in two weeks and went and did the whole thing. And he was super excited, said it was a blast. He loved every bit of the pain and the struggle of that process. I did a video on him. We can link it in here. It's, it's a, uh, the video I did with Brad. This whole idea that the only way to get ahead is to suffer is, I just think, is kind of weird and crazy. Wouldn't you rather just be happy, even if you had a little less money? Let's say happiness was going to cost you some money, but you could be happy the rest of your life, living in joy. Would you choose it? Matter of fact, I got a question for you. Let's, let's play with this. What if 
I could give you one of two things today. I could give you stay exactly the way you are and I give you $10 million. You do anything you want with it. You stay exactly the way you are though. Or I could give you a magic wand and I could pop in. We could turn, turn your ego off and give you lifelong happiness the rest of your life. Joy, peace, or turn your ego down or whatever we need to do. But your monetary life doesn't change. You have to, you're exactly the same other than you're just happy now. Life looks beautiful to you. Which would you pick? And it's an interesting question because there's a lot of people out there that would take the money. They would say to me, well, I can go buy happiness. I can go uh, take classes to learn to be happy, that having the money itself will make me happy. And I think you might be in for a big letdown. I think you might be in for something that you might not expect. Most lottery winners go broke for a reason, right? They can't handle the money. It, it, it hits their upper limit problem, which I also talk about in a previous video where I reference this happiness thing at stage three. So we should link that video on here too. But they hit that upper limit problem and then they end up going bankrupt. They end up losing their money. They end up stressed out because they can't handle all the success. They weren't prepared for it. It does create often a lot of problems in their life. And I think that if you have picked that lifelong happiness and you really learn to be happy, Everything you're meant to do in your life will start to come to fruition. You'll start to have the amazing life you always dreamed of, whether it's traveling the world, the perfect relationship. Yeah, you got to master stage two and three, and that's in that previous video. But it would be easy to do if you've mastered stage one. That's the beautiful part. So I want to ask you right now, if you had that choice between the $10 million dollars and the happiness which one would you pick can you put it in the comment below let's start a discussion about that with the group be real interested in seeing what you guys say because me personally i think i've had two core values my whole life that's driven me to where i'm at now and one of them is freedom more than money i want emotional i want to be happy i want to be free i don't want to be imprisoned by the world and and all its systems and and number two is the happiness that goes with that you know and that's been more important to me than following norms, making anybody else happy, trying to get something outside myself to make me happy. I'm not saying I haven't fallen prey to that, but I always pull myself back out. I'll get a job that starts to pay really well, but it feels like a prison, so I quit. I build a business that starts to make me a lot of money and it feels like a prison, so I quit. And I keep learning to change my life, to create more happiness, more freedom, and more joy. I had a lot of struggle in my youth guys i grew up as some of you know some of you might not know in a in a very abusive household bipolar mother probably borderline sociopathic stepfather that was a career criminal everybody yelling screaming fighting there was lots of abuse and it was basically a prison i was really sad i was really depressed i was really stuck inside and i just didn't know how to express myself and if I'm really honest, that's probably the real reason I do what I do today. It's because I was breaking free from that childhood prison. And I want to help other people do that too. That's the gift I have for the world. And that's why I'm here today. And so $10 million, but to still be stuck in a prison, sounds like a prison with gold bars. It's just not worth it. So that's really all I have for you today. Definitely check out my previous video on the three stages of success and that, and how these stages, this idea right here, stage one, build on stage two and three to really create powerful success in the world. That'll be linked in here. And I also have another video I just did on um, approaching women and how to go emotionally free, that, that free feeling when starting that conversation, the first 30 seconds to five minutes. It's an awesome technique I've used with a ton of people and it works, so check that out. Now, with that said, remember to like, subscribe, and share, and definitely remember to comment. I love those comments. And remember, only the confident really live. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.